here. You know, the older they get, older people, they don't care what you say. It's got to be their way because you know what? They figure they don't have that much longer. They haven't had their way all their life, and they're going to have it their way. You know what? Nobody gets it their way. Never. Never, because there, there is no way that's your way. It's God's way or no way. And we learn that. We learn that early on. We say it's your will, your way. His will, his way. And you know what? It's easier life. It's not hard at all. Because the transgressor has a hard way. The transgressor has a hard way. We don't have a hard way. We seemingly think we do, but I'm going to tell you, we are blessed. We are blessed above all the rest. The oil, joy, gladness is on our head, and our cup continually is flowing over. We can act like we want to look at a circumstances that seemingly is causing us to feel a certain way, but we're not even in our feelings. We're operating in the Spirit of God, praising Him and rejoicing in that that He is allowing us to go through. Because we've committed to Him everything. And then when Moses raised up the rod, God said, what you have in your hand? The rod. The rod is significant of the words that you speak. You can have the greatest meal always with the words that you speak. And sometimes it puts somebody in turmoil, but you know what? When you release it, then they have to change. There's a change going on. And see, people want to deal with people that's not going to shake their little nest. You know what? If you're a nest shaker, they don't want you around them. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. And then if you're prickly, you know, and they start kicking, and you're like, you've got pricks in you, meaning, okay, go ahead. And you're using the word, on them, the word of God on them, praying for them. Oh, no, please, get them out of here. I don't, I, we're not dealing with these people. There's something wrong with them. They're acting crazy. They're, they're looking stupid. They're not even acting the way they're supposed to be in it. They'll play any words on you that they can with everybody and get alliance going on. Just to get a laugh going on, just to get a ha-ha going on. But, you know, all the while, God is doing work. So it really doesn't even matter. You know, it's like water off a duck's back. You know, you constantly go through that in your jobs now. If you have people around you, you're going to have that. And they're doing that. They're rejecting you. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the Christ in you. But we want to we want to have our little homies. You know, we want to have our little uh, palsy wowsies outside of the church. Guess what? That ain't happening either. Because as soon as you thought you were going to cup walk with them, God's going to split that too. He's not going to have it. You, you cannot you cannot be unequally yoked with people and think you're going to befriend them. It's, God is not pleased with those types of things. I know because I've tried it. I've tried it a million times. And it never did work. And then, you know, I said, God, what about that? You know, they're just so open. They're honest. And it seemed like, you know, that it could be. No, they're not a friend of mine. So they're not a friend of yours. See, once you have a relationship, that's like uh, Pastor Tony and Lent, the marriage so long. They know what can violate their marriage. You know, you get a little hussy going on. Oh, it's not happening. Or you get, you know, some, some bucko that wants to uh, flirt with the, you know, first lady. It ain't happening. They're not, they're not going to let that relationship be turmoil because they both are in a love relationship and in a covenant relationship with God. So he alerts that. So there's an alert going on. There's alarms going off, you know. Oh, no. Oh, no. So some of that stuff that you think is jealousy, it's not jealousy. Because God's a jealous God. He's not going to have your relationship with something that's going to work it in a different way than where he's going with it. And although we think that's a good avenue, that's not a good avenue. He will stop it, you know, as you could, especially when one of you is continually surrendering, surrendering to God, because where there's two, he's looking at one. It's a one group there. And even with the, the church, he's looking at one church. It's a body of believers, but, you know, when you're all connected, he's looking at one body. He's, he's understanding and knowing. He's, he's giving the directions to the head. Jesus Christ, the head, the head of, 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 of this, he's letting them know what's going on or not. Because he's hid some things. He does it. Just like he did with Elijah. To make a miracle going on. But there was other issues in that thing too. But God is doing a critical work right now. But he's flowing in the flow that he wants flow. And I'm so thankful for it. Because it's a freedom flow. It's a freedom flow. But while I was intently studying my daddy's words. Because I love I love my daddy. And, I, you know, I like um, Mike Murdoch, too. He said, pick up the Word of God. Now, kiss your Word. Kiss your Word. You know what? You have to love this Word more than you love food, people, places, things, animals. 
You know how we get that love, we get stern for pets and all that kind of stuff, or the outfits we wear, or whatever, whatever people put up. But you know what? You get down with the book. I tell you what, he speaks to you. Sit, I'm gonna tell you what. I can sit in the chair and just go out. I mean, I'm gone. I, I'm so full. It's not play acting. It's a reality. It it does happen. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be together to, to get that relationship like that. You can you can be so in love with him. It's a love story, and he's letting us know what he's doing, and that's what I like about it. And it's excitement. He reveals himself. There's another part of him I didn't know. I didn't see that before. Just like a new marriage. You know, there's going to be things about your husband and your wife that you didn't know before. Because usually before you get married, you don't really tell a lot of stuff. And Well, a lot of times you don't tell it after you're married either. You know? But sometimes things happen. You find out some things and it, it works. And you work through it. I told Annette, they've been working almost 40 years on this thing. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, you talk about stepping in some high cotton, you know what I'm saying? And we touch cotton, boy, there's some pricks in that thing. You know when you get <laughs> that cotton soft, but oh, try to get to it. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Sound like Jesse's playing us, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Ain't he? He's cute too. But we love all our men and women of God. The first John, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves it is born of God and knoweth God. There is no way that you can tell me somebody out in the world loves. They have a, an emotional system going on where they call it love. They label it love, but that's not real love. God is love. Only in Him is their love. Only will you meet the true love. Only will you fall in love and be, have capabilities of loving other people. Otherwise, there's just no way. And you don't really realize that, not down anybody if they haven't met God yet or don't know Him, don't know Him for yourself. But there's such a relationship with God that, that love, you say, I'm so lost, I'm so broken, and I need love. So you keep searching in the wrong places, and we all have. There's no condemnation in that. Because, you know, a seeker search, and if you're not really understanding where to search and seek out, you go to the wrong places, and you can count the enemy usually leads you there because you're going in your natural self, and you're prone to places that are not, con you know, conducive to love. But when God sends somebody to you in love, and then you fall in love with them, you're you fall in love with people, and sometimes you know you get agitated, and aggravated with them more so when you love them. Even the more. And it's funny about that. You know, couples, they can get aggravated with each other because they love each other so much they want them to be a certain way. You'll never change anybody. Absolutely, you know. Only God changes people and we know that. And you know what? It seems like it's an elongated time. But see, what he does, he uses both of two people. Iron sharpening iron. The friction causes you to call out on the name of Jesus. Get desperate in this thing. I can't live like this anymore. And I've spoken this thing over and over. Like Hannah and Penina. Hannah was so desperate. Penina had it. And then Penina had the audacity to rail on her because she didn't have children. Okay. But God was waiting because Hannah said, If you just give me that son, I will give him back to you. And he was. He was a prophet. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times God is using that circumstance and that situation for Christ to be birthed, Jesus to be birthed in you. And at the right time, those things that you desired will come to pass. But again, it's giving it back to God in the fullness. You know, you, you can't think that you're going to serve God and still hold a little bit back. See, there's like one 